We're about back out on the field for the second half, so let's rejoin Joe Canning and Michael Dignan. Just as you say it, Michael, we've uh, picked up a couple of uh, cork changes. I see William Egan, 19, is out there, and Paulie O'Sullivan, number 23, is there as well. Paulie's gone into full forward. Uh, William Egan has gone to midfield there. He's uh, number 19, right in the middle of that group there, ready for the throw in. Osaki has gone, Jar Osaki and Kian McCarthy. I think the two of them have gone off. Well spotted. Second half gets underway. 13 points the margin. I'm quite certain that what the Cork management team will have said to their players is at least go out and try and win the second half and that must be their target at this stage. Immediately it's Aidan Fogarty pursued by Sean O'Guy Halpine. Down he goes. Aidan Fogarty got a goal and two points in the first half. Yeah, Jared, the work rate of this guy is just unbelievable. He, you know, an awkward high ball into him. He knew he wasn't going to catch it cleanly, so he broke it down to himself and travelled 50 yards to win it back, and then was brought it in long and fouled. So a chance for Richie Power has taken over the free-taking duties from the injured Henry Shefflin. That's the 20-metre line. Four points in the first half. Two of them, I think, from freeze, two from play. And a good start to the second 35 minutes. So normal service resumed immediately by a very efficient team and a very talented team. The uh, changes that Cork have made are interesting. William Egan is from their under-21 team. Paddy O'Sullivan, of course, young player. Dad Jerry actually is the county board chairman. Poddy rated one of the very best young forwards in Cork and that's uh, a slap there which has resulted in uh, a free to Kilkenny Yeah, Cork are trying to play with a two-man full forward line Poddy O'Sullivan is in on Noel Hickey and Pat Horgan is on uh, John Dalton um, not sure who's on Jackie Turtle he's just floating around in front of the two he's loose at the moment Carl Nocton seems to be on him obviously going to play as a third midfielder but I just say if he goes out Turtle will just stay back there and mop up and it's not going to work to too experienced to be drawn out of position the wind of the second half light breeze fresh breeze behind Kilkenny everything going for them and that is Richie Power again so six points for the 24 year old from Carrick Shock his brother John scored the uh, third goal in the minor match. A sensational victory by the minors over Galway. They're safely through to the final. And the seniors have one foot in that final already. Bidding for five in a row. Niall McCarthy trying to go by Tommy Welch this time. Succeeds. Putting the pressure on the Kilkenny full back line. Standing his ground there is Noel Hickey. Slipping it out here. Larkin trying to get away, former hurler of the year, got a point in the first half, back in, as far as Eddie Brennan, and Eddie Brennan got a goal after 70 minutes and he's got a point here, so the opening three scores of the second half all come to Kilkenny, two frees from Richie Power and now a point from Eddie Brennan, and if it wasn't good enough already it's even better now, 2.15 to five points, better if you're a Kilkenny fan. TJ Reid got one point during the first half. Sholago Halpin, who's a very, very proud Cork man, will be really feeling the, the bitterness of this performance so far. Kilkenny almost seemed to have extra players back there. Tommy Welch. Pressure back on the Cork backs again. Martin Comerford with a terrific catch. That's Cadigan taking it unchallenged. Slipping it out here towards William Egan. Well blocked out, it's Michael Fennelly there. Time to measure his pass into Comerford. Slipping away there from Tom Kenny. Back once again towards Char Fitzpatrick. What a start to the second half. Whatever about a Cork recovery, Cha getting his first point of this match. Both midfielders have scored. And I think it's a total now of eight different players who've scored for Kilkenny in this match. It is a sensational performance, and they're leading by 2.16 to five points. Yeah, well, Jerry, every player from Kilkenny from 8 to 15 has scored. Only one player from 8 to 15 on the court team has scored from play. That's Colin Nocton. And none of the forwards have managed to score from play. So, you know, if you're looking for the differences in the team, that's it. You don't have to look any further. Forwards are there ultimately to score. 
but the work rate and the movement and the room that they're creating for each other, support play, is just unbelievable. There's always a man available to take the pass, and their use of the ball is just brilliant. Diagonal ball all the time, and they're just showing a master class here. And one thing about Kilkenny, they won't stop. They'll just keep going, especially against Cork. They want to drive it home. They're certainly doing that. Jackie Terrell lobbing it in, in beyond Richie Power. Coming across to take it is Brian Murphy. One of the stars when Cork won two in a row, but that's a forehand pass back to Richie Power. Onto it, here comes Martin Comerford. And over his left shoulder, has a go, but he puts this one wide. When you think about it, Michael, that Martin Comerford and the rest of the Kilkenny players, they were level with Cork in the middle of the last decade, really, when you think about it, around about 2005, 2006. And then all of a sudden, Kilkenny have just put on this spurt. They've developed players, they've become a better team. Cork have regressed. You know, they had to share differences off the field and you know, really look at this for work right again by Owen Larkin. He's after covering 50, 60 yards to cut that ball off. But they're just, just incredible hurlers in every position. And, uh, you know, Cork had a couple of strikes and bits and pieces, but at the end of the day, Kilkenny concentrated on the hurling and kept bringing players through. Richie Power. Outside to Martin Comerford. This is like target practice. Let's put this one wide. I was asking somebody from Kilkenny going out of the ground last time they played here, which is five weeks ago in the Leinster final after they beat Galway, how are you so good? And he said, well, every Saturday morning our coaches bring a couple of players from each of the clubs, youngsters together in a kind of a camp, and they develop them and they get to learn how to play the Kilkenny way. And there's just no secret about it. There's no easy way of doing it. It's a case of putting in the hours people prepared to put somebody back into the game yeah, understanding the game a lot of ex-players involved all the time but you know in their minor team all their teams play the same minor under 21 senior and uh, you know they just have a template for it down there and they love the game really that's the bottom line back out here to TJ Reid if it were soccer we'd be talking about total football well this is total hurling total dominance and at times total brilliance Char Fitzpatrick didn't quite put it where he wanted yeah, you know a lot of elaborate hand passing which you wouldn't expect from Kilkenny and Aidan Fogarty was loose inside won't appreciate Chai having that shot Sean go help being a little block on it Tommy Welch comes slips it back in here towards Michael Fennelly Michael Rice missing because of a hand injury but he's among the subs off his left this time kept in play by Donal O'Cusack in points, it's 22 to 5. Huge gap between the teams. Cork trying to make inroads, trying to mount a first attack of the second half. Not getting anywhere. Back out again it comes. Larkin. Dodging this way and that. Still there's the total control. Pursued by three Cork players. Finally grounded. William Egan, the one who caught him. Yeah, it's all about pure power there with Owen Larkin, you know, there was lads chasing him all over the field, he broke a couple of tackles and, and I think he just went down with that ball in fairness, I think he just lost his footing, but it was back to JJ Delaney anyway. There's the story, Michael, which I heard here five weeks ago about a man who in 2006, just after they had lost the semi-final against Galway here, beginning of 2006, went into a bookmaker in Kilkenny and said, what odds am I going to get for Kilkenny to win the 2006 All-Ireland? So he's quoted something like, let's say three to one or something. And then he said, well, what about if they were to do, say, five in a row? And the bookmaker said, ah, oh, that will be silly. So he offered him a 1,000 to one, and I believe he had 50 euro on that. So he right now is sitting pretty on that particular bet. It was some bet to take back at the beginning of 2006. I don't know who it is, but I do know he exists. Yeah, well, good wise punt at this stage. But, you know, Waterford and uh, Tip, you know, this game still a long way to go, but, you know, it's, there's only going to be one result in Waterford and Tip. Uh, next Sunday, you know, the, whoever wins that will obviously go in as underdogs in the Ireland final. And um, at the same time, you know, Tipperary running a puck of the ball away last year. Waterford played very well against Kilkenny last year in the Ireland semi final. But as I keep saying, I just think Kilkenny are a lot stronger this year. So Jerry O'Connor comes on in place of the captain, Kieran Murphy. And once again, it's Michael Fennelly slipping it in here to Richie Parr, coming out onto the 45 metre line. That's another attempted shot which won't please the manager all that much because they've had wides in the second half they've had one stopped by the uh, goalkeeper their wides tally now is uh, up to 10 here's Jackie Tyrrell oh he's gone a good 90 metres with this clearance Owen Cadigan drops it down challenged by a couple of Kilkenny players 
inside to Egan again. That's good vision, picking out Ben O'Connor. Now Horgan, what can he do? Trying to turn. Only 22 years of age, a lot of expected of Patrick Horgan. Yeah, not all the intensity really jerking out of the game. You can see that in Kilkenny's play. They've had four or five uncharacteristic wides since half-time. They're just kind of strolling around the place now, and you know it's going to be a long second half, I think, for everybody. Well, even Kilkenny supporters and mentors were saying, we hope we get a good game from Cork today because the sport needs it. Hurling needs it. Well, I take that with a grain of salt from Kilkenny. They're, they're, not, in, they're not interested in what anybody else is doing once they're winning. And, you know, five in a row, six in a row, seven in a row. Like, if you look at the minor team earlier on, the, the exhibition that they produced, the strength of them, the athleticism, the hurling abilities, goal scoring, scored five goals against a good go good enough goal with team just destroyed them, and they just seem to have a conveyor belt at the moment way ahead of what anybody else is producing. Tough on uh, Dennis Walsh and the rest of the selectors now trying to concoct any kind of plan to come to terms with the challenge that they are confronting. Michael Fennelly. And looking around to go diagonally, pick out a spot where there might be some gain. Brian Murphy comes out here, getting away from Eddie Brennan. Niall McCarthy, it's a big hearted player from Carrick Tool, takes off again. Difficult one for Cahill Nocton to get at the end of. Instead, it's Tommy Welch. And Tommy Welch raises one of the biggest cheers in Croke Park for the afternoon. Yeah, great bit of hurling. The way he trapped that ball, just pure hurling and drove out. And he wasn't looking for a free, he was ready to play on. Of all the popular figures in this particular Kilkenny team, I think he is up there with Henry Shefflin. Yeah, you know, what a career he's had. He's seven, this is his eighth season, but in seven full seasons, he's won seven All Stars. Uh, one of the corner back, wing back, midfield, wing forward, just incredible. You could put him anywhere, and you know, he's only 27 years of age, so much more to come from him. And you know, he's going to go down in history as one of the greatest players we've ever seen. He's actually scored a goal in 28 points as a forward. Here he is again, or here at Cork again. Cork are about to make a, a change, and it's going to be Michael Cousins' turn to come in in a moment. So, Michael Cusson will come on, and it will be... Uh, let's just see who's going to go off. It's going to be Cahill Nocton. So, big Michael Cusson comes in. We don't have a Saki. He went off at half-time, but uh, Michael Cusson's in at full forward now, if he ever gets the possession. Horgan has it, trying to go through, and he's got a penalty. Well, Cork are 2.16 to six points down and Pat Horgan will probably be the taker of the penalty scored one against Limerick, had one saved as well this is where he was uh, running into the challenge of JJ Delaney he was trying to force his way forward, looking for it and Brian Gavin says, yep yeah, well I think they're so far ahead, you know I think in a tight game he wouldn't have got that he definitely led with the hurl I thought and uh, JJ Delaney said frustrated he was going to catch that ball and John Dalton brought it down in front of him Three yellow cards now for uh, Kilkenny backs. That's JJ. Well, in a tighter match, as you say, Michael, it might well not have uh, gone their way. But uh, here in this particular match, with that wide margin, 16 points. Pat Corgan shoots, and it's gone up over the bar off the stick there of PJ Ryan. Has to be content with a, a white flag rather than a green. And it's Pat Horgan's first point of this match. Good stop by PJ Ryan. Good height for him as well. It was a way too high in a way. Yeah. It might have been, even gone over the bar without the touch. But you know, to me, that's at this level. You know, that has to be low and hard and on target. And you know, there's no excuse for that. It was rising all the time over the bar, and that's very poor. So in points, 22 points to seven, as you can see. And Ronan Curran takes this one down. Very commanding figure up towards Horgan again. Trying to get away now here from Jackie Tyrrell. Letting it fly from a huge distance, and that's a smashing point. That's two in a row now for the 22-year-old from Glenn Rovers. Yeah, super score, John. You have to say about Pat Hart in the second half, you know, whether it was a penalty or not, he was on the ball, and that's the third or fourth time in the second half, and that's a great score off his left side. Well, the future is, for Cork at least, players like Pat Horgan and like Paddy O'Sullivan and William Egan, they've got to go that route now, I think. 
Sean O'Gahal being one of those to give fantastic service over the years. Unable to link up with Niall McCarthy. Tommy Welch nips in. Bit of a scramble. In the end, TJ Reid comes away with it. Stolen from him by Jerry O'Connor. And on it comes here to the twin brother, Ben O'Connor. Out as far as Horgan, going for three in a row. And he's got it. How about that? Bit of a comeback now being made by Cork. Yeah, good work there by Jerry O'Connor, first of all, intercepted a good ball, and Ben then lays it off nicely to Pat Horgan, another good score. Just didn't seem to have that sense of confidence about them in the opening 20 minutes when Kilkenny went about their business and simply blitzed the men in red. They come again, Larkin getting away from Egan, twisting this way and that, this is very reminiscent of the goal he got in the 2008 semi-final, this time it comes out to Eddie Brennan, blocked down that time by Cadigan, back to Brennan again, trying to make a better angle for himself, sensible play, back here once again to the midfield player, and Char nips in and puts it over, and that's two points in this second half for the man from Ballyhale Shamrocks, James Char Fitzpatrick. Yeah, you could sense maybe Kilkenny had taken their foot off the pedal for the last 10 minutes and just Owen Larkin, great catch again there and lovely ball outside by Eddie Brennan to Cha and as I said earlier, always very accurate and taps it over the bar. And again they come, James Ryle, nicely down, again a good angle taken up by Eddie Brennan, he was anticipating, didn't make it that time, he's claiming that it did go over, even with that kind of a lead they're still looking for more and that's the greatness of the team, never content, always looking for more. Michael Dempsey there alongside Brian Cody, valuable member of the backroom team, along with Martin Fogarty, of course, as well. From that puck out, straight to Owen Larkin, that's a bad puck out. JJ Delaney returning it. This time it's Shane Murphy who was watching it going back, Martin Comerford was coming across, down went Owen Cadigan, and Cork will have themselves a free out. Well, they'll play on and look for more respectability. They won't want to be hammered, but there's an opportunity now for uh, Michael Rice to come into the game. Meanwhile, the Kilkenny backs dealing with the threat from Cork, and it's Michael Fennelly again, who had a marvellous first half when the match mattered most. Out to Char Fitzpatrick, his midfield partner. It's going to be interesting to see who comes off if uh, Michael Rice comes on, because they both played well, Cha and Fennelly. Michael Rice can play at centre forward as well, so maybe it's one of the forwards. I, I can't imagine either the midfielder has been taken off, but he probably wants to get some match time into Michael Rice before the other in the final. Noel Hickey. Taken down well here by Sean O'Gahalpine. Played on here towards Jerry O'Connor. Now John Gardner. Well, from a distance, his striking is good, and he's put it over and he's got his first point. So it's going to be Eddie Brennan who's got to come off, by the way, to enable Michael Rice to come on as we watch that point again in reprise. Beautiful score there by John Gardner. Cork's 10th. Yeah, well, that's an interesting, you know, shows you the way he can operate. Eddie Brennan has been very lively to me, but he's hit four maybe wide. He scored a goal in the point, but he could have had 1-5, and I'd say that's just a little, you know, reminder that he'll have to be a bit sharper the next day. He's now 31 years of age, same as Henry, and... Uh, bringing on a younger player in Michael Rice and as you say maybe a timely reminder just to buck up a little bit there's Rice straight away into the thick of the action down as far as Richie Power nicely off here he is Michael Rice great block well done by Owen Cadigan comes back to him again however fancying his chances the second time well went nowhere with that it's a poor ball and it's given away, and Cork can now burst out with Ben O'Connor. Jerry O'Connor, his twin brother, couldn't quite link up with him. In came Michael Fennelly. Jerry getting it forward to Pat Horgan. Three Kilkenny players around him. They're refusing to take the foot off the gas at the back anyway, making it very, very difficult for the young Glen Rovers player to get it in towards Michael Cusson. Back towards Horgan once again. Onto his left-hand side, a great strike, and it's gone over the bar. He's having a very good second half. Well, if he has confidence in himself, he can do an immense amount on the field out there. He's a very talented young player. Showed it again here as Cusson played it back into him. Off his left and beautifully over. Cork's 11th score. Yeah, and credit Cork in the last 10 minutes, you know, they really 
you know, just stayed going. And Pat Horgan, in particular, he epitomises um, that spirit. He was, I'd say, very disappointed to be dropped against Antrim the last day, having a fine game. And John Gardner also having a very good second half. Well, they've had a penalty stopped. If that had gone in, it would have been an interesting position. Mind you, Kilkenny are still so far ahead in front of an attendance of 41,060 people here. Comerford comes across. And again, the striking is good. Two points now for Martin Comerford, point in each match, or point in each half, I should say. And John Wall Hall becomes the next man in. Number uh, 27. Yeah, just the last two points, Kilkenny have got you. Know, they've been straight after Cork scores. You just get the feeling that the sense, you know, they have to maybe lift it again a little bit and they're able to respond straight away. So the Kilkenny captain goes, TJ Reid, John Will Hall comes on, and John in the green and red helmet there. And then I've seen a lot of him, Ger, over the last couple of years, under 21 level, a very, very good player. Um, tough as nails as you know the way the Kilkenny forwards are and a great batter and I think we're going to see a lot of him over the next few years some uh, three or four matches in the league this year he was absolutely brilliant star of the league campaign really and it wasn't a great campaign for Kilkenny it must be said as Richie Powers says that one come back to him again taking it through again knocking it in stopped by the goalkeeper and Donalo Cusack does well sun in his eyes steadies himself and from 20 metres out from his own goal drops it now some 30 metres out from the Kilkenny goal trying to spark the Cork forwards into life, but John Dalton, cool as you like, comes across here and away down the field again. 14 minutes left in the semi final. Here's Shane Murphy, 26 year old from Aaron Zone. Line ball to Kilkenny. Uh, blocking and hooking again there, but John Dalton, you know, super player at cornerback. There's Richie Power going through. Don't look again. One thing about Donald, like he stands up, you know, he, he doesn't go to ground too early. Watch him there, he stays on his feet. I think Richard just mishit that. He one. mishit it as well, but uh, good goalkeeping at the same time. But John Dalton, I remember as a minor, he was a brilliant full back. Brian Cody thought at that stage he'd be the successor to Noel Hickey, and it's taken him a few years to break onto the team, replacing the great Michael Kavanagh. But he's, you know, turned out to be a big, huge asset, a fresh player again this year, a cornerback. Just, just as he's had to take his time to replace Michael Kavanagh, who incidentally has a finger injury at the moment, as I was speaking to him before the game, in the same way, they're not rushing John Mulhall. It's the Cody way of doing it. But they don't have to rush them. You know, they've brought True. TJ Reid along slowly. They're bringing Richie Hogan along. Even he was in last year, he's out this year. But that's the way they, you know, it, you're really 23 24, I think, before you can break onto this Kilkenny team. Now, they're not rushing any young players. So, Richie Power, he's 24. 20 metres out. No need to go for a goal here. Taps it up high. Gets his seventh of the day. It's a very good individual tally and there are 14 points between these teams and that man will be looking forward I'm sure to getting his tickets for the All-Ireland final what is it some four weeks from now Kilkenny will be there Cork will have to go back to the rebuilding process Sean will go Halpine towards William Egan who will hope to be part of that building process Ronan Curran Jerry O'Connor now he's been a great player over the years hurler of the year back in 2005 Cosson couldn't take it down John Dalton can just been talking about him tidy and economical gets it out there back into Jerry O'Connor again here taking on the backs foot went out to stop him and bring him down free into Cork Yeah, Jerry O'Connor has made a bit of an impact. So, uh, yellow card there was dished out to James Ryle. As Ben O'Connor strikes and makes absolutely sure another white flag. His yeah. five points all coming from freeze. Sorry, Jerry. I think that makes it seven points all in the second half. You know, much more even. But you'd have to say. Kenny really have taken the foot off the pedal and they're just, you know, they tend to respond to a car score with a point themselves, but, you know, they're just uh, walking around the place in most positions now, taking it. I don't think anyone wants to pick up an injury now or anything like that with, with the final coming up in a few weeks' time. But so still the likes of John Mulhall that, you know, he'd be liking to make an impression. So Graham Callanan coming on there for just his fourth championship match, coming on in place of Tom Kenny. 
Cork have replaced their two midfielders in the course of this match. Oof, that was a high challenge there on John Mulhall. Free in. Referee will have some words. I think it was Graham Callanan who caught him. It was. First piece of action since being introduced. So, straight into the action. Card straight away. Richie Power this time just inside the 65 meter line as you can see 10 minutes still to go and another one for a young player from Carrick Shop you know this is great for his confidence you know we don't know obviously the the status of Henry Shefflin's injury but uh, you know if he's not starting the other final, Richie Powell obviously will be taking the freeze and it's great to be up in Cork Park in the Lawrence semi-final and he's after scoring six out of six since he took over. William Egan knocking it in diagonally towards Pat Horgan. Cork's brightest attacker certainly in the second half with his four points. Haven't got anything really anywhere else. Don't think Potty O'Sullivan's got a ball. Michael Fennelly from 65 metres has a go. Again, Donalo Cusack. Well, he's 33 years of age now, but goalkeepers can keep on going for quite a number of years, so I'm sure he'll be still number one when we get into 2011. I think Van der Sar for Manchester United is heading towards his 40th year. John Gardner. He didn't Good get shot. He didn't get too many hurdles broken off him over the years. <laughs> John Gardner with a, a second point in the second half. So, 220 to 13 points. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, John Gardner is a super midfielder, he can do that, you know, he can knock over three or four points in the game. And uh, Owen Larkin, though, you know, I think he's only scored maybe one point, but he's been on the ball an awful lot and very, very strong, creating a lot of stuff. John, John, John Gardner is only 27 years of age. I know he seems like he's been around Played for... a huge amount of hurling. Oh, yeah. he has, of course. But there's still a lot in him. And there's still a lot more in this. And that's another one. Back of the net for Richie Power, a goal and eight points, the fifth time he's ever scored in the championship, and Kilkenny have simply romped past Cork in the All-Ireland semi-final. Great hands, great finishing, Kilkenny 320, Cork 13 points. The gap is alarming. Yeah. 16 between them. And from the first minute, you know, I just thought Richie Power looked to have far too much hurling for Owen Cadigan, and that goal sums it up. Brilliant finish, brilliant catch, and... Now, this is again the Richie Power, you know, really the last couple of years he's had a lot of injuries and, you know, I think we all identified him as maybe the key man, key young player on this Kilkenny team and today he's really stamped his mark on the team. Well, Kilkenny now ready to make uh, another change. Derek Ling comes in. He's the fifth and final substitute. Well, a man who played at midfield in last year's All-Ireland final comes on in place of Chaff Fitzpatrick. What a panel of players. What a standing ovation for Char Fitzpatrick. They'd give it to each and every one of the 15 starting this afternoon if they could. Stars everywhere and anywhere. Well, like one thing is you'll, you'll know with the Kenny public, they know they're hurling and Char had a fantastic game today, has been out of the team, would be one of the most popular members of the panel and the team down at Kenny. And just with Rice and Finley in the farm and he couldn't make it, but he's going to stake a strong claim now for the final of the Super game today. And look at Derek Ling coming on, man with a load of All-Ireland medals and All-Stars and never let the team down either and he can't get into the team so it just shows you the strength and depth is just unbelievable well in recent weeks Michael we've sat here and we've seen Kilkenny take on Galway in the Leinster final and beat them handily and Galway were perceived to be one of those teams who might well have uh, caused Kilkenny problems today the uh, great old traditional power of Cork have come here in the semi-final. They've failed to rattle Kilkenny in any way, shape or form. There's really only Waterford and Tipperary left if Kilkenny are to be denied five in a row. They go into battle in the semi-final next Sunday. That should be a much, much closer battle, I'm sure, and a really good match, one to look forward to live on the Sunday game. One of them will be playing Kilkenny on the first Sunday of September. People say, well, are Kilkenny winning all these matches by such a margin is that good for hurling true the matter is the others have got to come up to their standards and so far none of them are managing to do that with the exception of Tipperary in last year's All-Ireland final yeah well the difference I think is Kilkenny keep bringing players through you know maybe it's only one year you know now and again and they're adding to the panel all the time and Cork doesn't have to brought through a player for the last four or five years Pat Horgan is the only one 
that and you know he's been on and off the team again this year so they just need to stick with him they're going to have to come up with new players if they have them and maybe they don't have them down in Cork at the moment well Don McCarthy has his first point and it's come as you can see in the 65th minute 320 to 15 points once again a five-star performance by the Cats heading for another All-Ireland final PJ Ryan picking out a would-be target down there maybe Michael Fennelly in came Derek Ling as well but it's Jerry O'Sullivan out here to his twin brother Ben feeds it back to Jerry the Ben and Jerry show and a lovely score well in spite of the wide margin Cork have got some terrific scores in this game Pat Horgan earlier on and that point by Jerry O'Connor now was as good as you could see a twin experience yeah I think Jerry in fairness has made a made a big impression since he came on he's created he's been lively he's created a few scores and Ben has been more lively out on the wing as well and you know they're bringing other players into the game well Dennis Walsh has inherited a team that were uh, in decline essentially coming from the All-Ireland successes as Tommy Welch comes on to it and strikes it over the bar his first point today his first point in this year's championship what a player what a score what a response 14 between them sums up the difference Niall McCarthy raiding onto it here comes Egan just a bit too far ahead there too far ahead indeed and Noel Hickey in there strong as you like just firmed his boots into the ground got the ball and got it away Gardner now up as far as Ben O'Connor it's a lovely shot oh it's a lovely point by Ben O'Connor seven points by Ben O'Connor four from Pat Horg and we got a lovely point from Jerry O'Connor they're still going to finish on the losing side 13 points the margin yeah brilliant score by Ben O'Connor but he, you know to be fair to Ben O'Connor over the last decade he's been one of the top forwards in the game and very very consistent and has had a fine second half as well I think that's 12 points Cork have scored in the second half and Ben has had a hand in a lot of them well if somebody said that Cork would have to get about 17 18 points and maybe a couple of goals as well with a chance to beat Kilkenny well they've got the points not the goals that's it you know I thought they'd need two to three goals and they never really looked like scoring a goal at all Kilkenny full back then rock solid oh, great piece what of about that Kilkenny. for Tommy Welch pinched the ball off Pat Horgan took it up superbly and then didn't waste a second before getting it away that is half back play par excellence Niall McCarthy whipping it in Ooh, good it was save. Cusson who was getting there very good save by a man who uh, is intent upon denying Cork any goal scores just score this afternoon little touch there from Michael Cusson good reaction by Cusson and a great save by PJ Ryan and here's Tommy Walsh just coming in here and just look at this just flicks the ball up and away from his man and clears it all into one movement beautiful hurling and balance well after that there was a good save as you say by PJ Ryan the man who won man of the match in last year's All-Ireland final and uh, that one has gone wide so it's Cork's first wide of the second half seventh in all puck out to Kilkenny and to PJ Ryan mention of puck fodders and pucking out well done to uh, Graham Clark of Down, who won the uh, puck father of the Anna Verna Mountains last weekend. And Patricia Jackman of Waterford as well, the uh, women's champion in that event. Now, John Mulhall in here towards Michael Fennelly. He's had a storming match. Only his second point, but his all-round dominance of midfield, his leadership of the team when it mattered most, He's come on a ton this year. You mentioned it before the game, Michael, and he has certainly performed. Well, he had 23 possessions, I mentioned that, against Galway, which is unbelievable in the modern game. You know, if you have 9, 10, 11 maybe, but 23, and I'd say today, I don't know what the stat is on it, but he's been on the ball an unbelievable amount. He's had a super, super game. Michael Cusson, the 6-foot, 7-inch dinosaur, trying to come through. Can't get through, however. And Horgan runs into a tackle, which the referee didn't like, and it's going to be a, a free in. One minute of added time will be played, so we've got another two minutes of this. You only get to see Kilkenny four times in the championship, assuming that they always go through the different 
steps that they uh, are presented with. So we need to savour each and every one of them. Big challenge for the opponents. Horgan shooting and putting it over the bar. He's got five points, two of them from freeze and uh, three from play. Good second half by Patrick Horgan. He has, he's done very well. Just maybe the two frees, you know, but one was a penalty, one was a 21-yard free. They have to be low and, uh, you know, test the goalie, test the backs, like putting them over the bar at this level, you know, really they should be on target and, you know, make them save them anyway. Mention of tests, how will Brian Cody feel about the test he had in the semi-final? He'll be happy, I'd say, that's, he's, he's always pragmatic. He'll say, we've done, we've done enough and we've another huge battle ahead in the final. That's the normal party line from... from <laughs> there. You know, he'll be happy. Oof, look at this off that the was... Side, but, like, his panel today, you know, uh, say Henry Sheffin going off injured, but outside of that, able to bring on those players, able to bring on those players all over the field and never weaken the team in any way, uh, any of the subs that came on. Uh, so, like, that's the big plus to have, to have 20 players at that level. But, Michael, in the second half, we're suddenly seeing Cork play with cohesion. There's a certain extra spirit and direction in their play. They're getting the ball to Horgan, and Horgan is now putting it over the bar. He's got six. Why didn't they do this in the first half? Because Kilkenny didn't let them. You know, Kilkenny, to me, have taken that bit did of intensity. Did Cork believe they could do it in the first half? Yeah, they probably came out with, you know, with, the, with thinking that they did, but Kilkenny stood up to them. That's what they do. They suffocate teams in the first 20 minutes, and just in the second half, it's opened up. But Pat Horgan has scored four points in play um, off of Jackie Turrell, and that's going to be, you know, something Brian Cody is going to work on with Jackie Turrell now for the final. And they always try to pick out the, you know, the negatives in their performance. Well, the the margin right now it's uh, what 12 points. Not a great deal of time left. Horgan once again causing problems for Jackie Turrell, as you say. Back here to Ben O'Connor. Horgan with that final shot. The referee looks at his watch, blows his whistle, and Kilkenny have reached their 11th All-Ireland Hurling Final in 13th seasons. What a performance by Brian Cody and his team. So much to be satisfied about. Getting the congratulations there of uh, Frank Murphy and the rest of the Cork backroom people. Donal Cusack beaten on three occasions, nothing he could do really about two of the goals anyway. Richie Power with a goal and eight points. Michael, some performance by the defending champions and the drive for five is very firmly on. It's very much still alive, a brilliant performance. Uh, you have to say very professional in the first half and you know the second half a lot more even but still Kilkenny always had a little bit in reserve. One thing I'd just like to say, you know, there's a lot of talk during the week about these players not liking each other and this, that and the other. Like to me, there's a huge respect among these group of players. Kilkenny have one of the greatest teams of all time, but this Cork team in their own right, fantastic team. They've always stood up for what they believed in. Uh, very principled, uh, very very principled bunch. And you know they took the stances they took because they believed it was the right thing to do. And you know a lot of people getting involved during the week talking about the book, Don Logue's book and whatever. But you'll find you can see these players going out there shaking hands, swapping jerseys. They have huge respect for each other. And you know well done to Kilkenny. And you know maybe one or two of those Cork players if we don't see them again. Uh, you know, like Sean, will they be back next year? They've been brilliant servants, and you know, hopefully, you will see them back. But Cork certainly have to rebuild, and Kilkenny did what they had to do and did it very, very scarily in, in terms of Tipperary and Waterford looking on. Well, that's to come the second semi final next Sunday to enjoy on the Sunday game. This afternoon, it's finished at Croke Park. Kilkenny, three goals and 22 points. Cork, 19 points. Back to Michael and the panel. We have been asked. and Michael Dignan in the commentary box. Gerlock Nan. That's much talked about drive for five. It's just one game away now. Well, it's within touching distance now, you know, and it's, it's very hard to see how it's going to be stopped. You know, when you see 3.22 there today, missing the three players at the start, and Henry Shefflin goes off, Brian, uh, Brian, Brian Hogan goes off, they can take off two or three yeah. more players. It just shows the strength of that panel. But it's the overall work ethic of the whole thing. Of the, uh, you know, the team is what matters. It's not individuals, whether they're management, whether they're players. It's the work rate of the team that are out there. And, and the way they support each other on the field mm. is just, is, you know, no, we have no, we've never seen a team do this before. And, you know, the little doubts that were before they came into the game, the doubt about the goalie, the doubt about Noel Hickey at full back, all late the rest, yeah. they were brilliant. The wides they had earlier, on, especially against Galway, very few wides today. A real clinical performance. Allied to 
some massive, brilliant individual performance mm -hmm. as well. You know, what a team. And I, th I think today is the, that has, everything has been laid to rest after the day about the greatness of this team. Yes. We have never seen a team like this before. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And when they could do what they did today without the players that they had against a team of Cork's quality, who in fairness now behave very honourably yes. and never give up. They won the second half, whatever that means, you know. But uh, like they are some team and, you know, how are they going to be stopped now from the five in a row? That's the big question. Let's hear from the Kilkenny manager, Brian Cody. He's talking to Marty Morrissey. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, Brian, thank you for coming into our interview room here. Well done. Congratulations. Awesome performance. Probably the best we've seen in Croke Park for a long, long time. Well, I don't know, Marty, about that, to be honest about it. We just came up to try and win the game, and, you know, we're very, very happy to win the game. The big prize for semi-final day always is you're in the all Ireland final, and otherwise your year is over. So, thanks be to God, we'll be here again in a few weeks' time. I know uh, words like awesome and brilliance, it's associated with this Kilkenny team, but when you think that John Tennyson uh, was out, Brian Hogan picked up a shoulder in injury, Henry Shefflin uh, has a knee problem, and you it didn't look like the balance was intimidated or affected in any way. Well, I mean, the panel is, is what's most important of all, you know, and we constantly say we have um, confidence in the panel. You know, the panel has been tested, it was tested before, and it'll be tested again. So, I mean, if somebody steps out, I hate to see a fellow being injured, it's cruel on himself, but somebody steps in to take his place and does the job for, for the team, and that's, that's what's required. Is it all about the competition for places? Is that what makes this adrenaline rush every time Kilkenny come onto the field? Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't think about what, it's, what other people's perception is. You know, we just go up and play hurling and prepare for hurling matches and, you know, try and play as well as it, we possibly can as a team and, you know, give it absolutely everything, you know. And, you know, that's, that's in fairness what the lads do and, you know, they did it again today. Is there much talk in Kilkenny about the five in a row? I have no idea, to be honest, because I'm not thinking about anything at all. I mean, I was thinking about today's match, and nothing can be won, no, no finals can be won until you're in it. We're in the All Ireland final now, and whatever talk there will be, there will be, but our focus won't change. What about Brian Hogan and Henry Shefflin? What is the latest on them? A serious concern, obviously, because the two lads wouldn't consider even going off for a niggle, you know, they're serious injuries. Um, don't know what the story is uh, really yet at all. We have to get them assessed and see. But obviously, they're huge players. You're talking about centre back and centre forward today. Both of them playing very, very well. And we'll leave no stone unturned, obviously, to have them back as quickly as possible. Looking forward to another All Ireland final? Yeah, it's terrific. I love coming up uh, next Sunday to see the other, other All Ireland semi final when we've won. And <clears throat> we have tipping water for next Sunday. We'll play the winners and, you know, we'll prepare for that. Brian Cody, well done. Congratulations. Thanks, Marty. Thoughts of Brian Cody, the uh, Kilkenny manager there. Tomás McKay, let's talk about this from a Cork point of view. Um, I mentioned before the match that two years ago you lost by nine, nine points to them, but this was a different class altogether. Oh, absolutely, Michael. And look, you've got to put your hands up and say, yeah, we were blown away. When the, at the critical stage in the game, with the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, we were blown away. And we've, you can, Cork can't have any uh, answers or questions about or anything like that, about the, the result. I mean, at the end of the day, they are a very, very polished unit. They showed serious aggression in the tackle. They see a serious hunger to fight for every ball. And that's down to the last minute. And Brian Cody mentioned about their panel and about their strength and depth. One guy goes off, it's bad luck if it's an injury. One guy comes in and he's delighted with the opportunity and he wants to grasp that opportunity and he wants to play for the Kilkenny jersey and all. I mean, um, second half, yeah, Cork maybe probably finished with their best team in the second half period, mm. you know. So I think when Dennis Walsh maybe looks back on that, he'll say to himself, um, maybe there could have been a few changes made earlier on in that first half period again because a lot of people, a lot of players were struggling. Uh, it was a lot of physical for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it seemed to take an awful lot of other Cork guys. They lost the energy and le levels, and particularly around the middle of the park as well, and uh, uh, it was, it was non-stop from Kilkenny. And I mean... A lot of these guys will ask themselves from a Cork perspective, is this the end of the road, Michael, yeah. and stuff like that as well. And they don't owe anything, owe anything to Cork Hurling. They've given great joy to Cork supporters over the last 10 years. And if it is the end of the day, it has to come for us all, it yeah. happened to us all, exactly. mm. that'll be it, you know. And sure. they can look back at it in pride and stuff like that. Today wasn't to be their day, they were beaten by a way better team. But one thing about it, Cyril Farrell, is that we've talked about the strength of Kilkenny bench. Mm. You still only put 15 out in the field. And at the start of the match, Cork weren't using their 15 players. Some of their forwards were standing there, didn't see the ball at all. Mm. Yeah, well, it's just like, you know, the, the, car, like, the midfield for, for Kilkenny today was awesome. Michael Finley and Chaff, it's the problem in the next is Chaff will still be on. I think Michael Rice will get back in centre forward. Mm. Michael Finley today stood up. He kind of proved the player it could be. And the same with Richie Power. They stood up as kind of 
the kind of, they're, they're always threatened to do this, but now they're standing, they're up with the Henry Chefs of this world. But then when you have your half-back line, Tennyson, you know, he was, the days were missed with Ryan Clement quite played well, but you had J Jackie Tyrrell quarterback, got a roast today from Pat Hall, but you find the next day probably be good, but Hickey full-back, enormous, and the half-back line again, when the pressure was on, it had to be one, they got on top, and the win for the goals early on, as Tomas said, like, that game was won in about 15 or 20 minutes the first half, once yeah. they won the battles, but they're very, very strong, very, very good, very, very skillful, and there's no doubt about it, they are the best team we've ever seen. Okay, we're going to uh, take another short break here on the program back with more on this afternoon's All-Ireland semi-final straight after that.